Now we will introduce the devices actually used for measurements. First, please look at page 9. We use this radiation contamination measurement device, GM tube type survey meter, when things are taken out of the controlled area or when you conduct a screening. On the right side of the device, you can find a silver cylinder, and this indicates the instrument reading when you put it near the surface of the object material. As you can see, it is used for measuring the contamination density on the surface and during calibrations, usually conducted once every six months, which means that we calibrate them by the ratio of the number of beta rays that emits cobalt-60 with a standard radiation source or the number of counts of the GM tube. And below that, you can see a gate monitor. This is made for preventing the radioactive materials on the surface of the worker's body from moving outside the controlled area with the workers. In order to measure the contamination density of the body surface, we put approximately 17 plastic scintillation detectors from head to toe for directing them towards the body. With these kinds of devices, we measure the radiation on the surface of the bodies, and if the results of the measurement is below the screening level, you are allowed to go outside the controlled area. With respect to this gate monitor, we properly calibrate it once every six months. Next, please. Then, as a device that measures the radiation dose in the air, there is an ionization chamber type survey meter for gamma rays. In this picture, there is an ionization chamber type survey meter in the cylinder part on top. And once the gamma rays hit this part, the gas inside ionizes and the current is indicated. This is commonly used in order to measure the airborne radiation inside the controlled area and we calibrate this device once a year with a dose equivalent rate of cesium-137 standard radiation source. And then we use a special device, the uh, aforementioned neutron type detector. That is, we measure with the REM counter below. Since neutrons do not ionize, we measure with a detector filled with a special material, helium-3. As this is a very special measurement instrument, we have an external expert organization calibrated once a year. Please go to the next page. Here, we would like to explain the devices used to measure individual exposure doses. The individual dose meter to evaluate external exposure is capable of measuring both the alpha rays and the beta rays. It contains a silicon semiconductor detector, and for gamma rays, it can measure from 0.01 .01 millisieverts to 999.9 .9 millisieverts. For beta rays, it can measure from 0.1 millisieverts to 999.9 .9 millisieverts. It is calibrated once every six months by external specialized institutes. For individual dose meters, as they were flooded by the tsunami at the time of the incident, it was not possible to distribute one to each individual. However, the power st station now has 6,000 individual dose meters and is now held by all workers, including TEPCO employees. Below is shown a measure to evaluate internal exposure. This is the so-called whole body counter. The photo shows the type that can conduct measurements from a seated position. Around it, plastic scintillation detectors are installed, and when you sit on it, it detects radiation from within your body and translates it into figures. The detectors are placed around your chest to your stomach, and it is calibrated by this phantom ray source. Please go to the next page. Lastly, we would like to introduce a unique measure, the grass patch. APD measures exposure doses every day. However, when we want to measure an accumulated dose for a one-month period, this grass patch is used for continual measurements. By using the scintillation effect and by using its reader, it shows the accumulated dose. An external institute is also calibrating this device. The device below shows another special dose meter, a glass ring for beta rays. Basically, our radiation dose of external exposure is managed by the individual dose meter attached to our chest. However, in cases where there may be a beta ray source within the water and work is needed by hand, 
there will be the possibility that not only our chest but our hands may be exposed. Therefore, in these cases, these glass rings are attached to our fingers or wrists to measure the surrounding beta rays. A monthly accumulated dose will also be measured after use. This is all for the measuring devices. Next, we would like to introduce how the nuclide analysis is carried out. First of all, page 13 is an alpha ray nuclide measurement. The nuclides of alpha rays and beta, uh, beta rays have a tendency to not travel outside. Therefore, prior treatment and a special operation will be necessary for measurement. In the case of prior treatment for plutonium, following the incineration at the electro furnace, extracting water, etc., heating, filtration, concentration of filtrated liquid, boiling and baking, uh, which allows us to measure, will be done. After that, it will be put in a special device called the alpha ray spectrometer. And from the dispatched radioactive energy, the analysis of the type of alpha nuclides will be conducted. The analysis itself takes about a week. However, due to the waiting list and uh, data organization, etc., it now takes about two to three weeks to obtain the results of the analysis. Please go to the next page. For strontium, a nuclide within beta rays, prior treatment also takes a slightly long period of time. After the milking procedure by yttrium, it is measured by the gamma ray spectrometer. This procedure takes also takes 15 days, around two weeks. However, due to the waiting list and data organization, etc., an analysis of strontium now takes about a month. Also on page 15, tritium is introduced. Tritium is included in water, and as it is a very weak beta ray, for prior treatment, it is necessary to distill and concentrate it. For the second of the prior treatment, it is taken in a glass vial jar, and after adding a special substance called liquid scintillator, it is measured in the liquid scintillation measurer. Overall, the measurement is completed in about a week. However, the actual duration time will be a little longer. Following is a gamma ray analysis. Gamma rays are measured by a germanium semiconductor detector. Please take a look at the photo. The detector is placed in the silver circular cylinder shaped part in the upper part of the photo. As it needs to be measured under extremely low temperature conditions, the cream colored tank shown on the lower part of the photo contains liquid nitrogen. When measured in this way, as it is shown on the graph, it shows how many counts are dispatched from each emission of energy. A specific energy is determined by each nuclide. So from the energy, we can identify which substance exists. Gamma rays have a comparatively strong penetration rate, so we think the analysis can be done in a comparatively short time. We think that via this measuring system of radioactive materials, we are adequately monitoring the site working environment, especially through monitoring the working site air dose rate and the amount of radioactive materials in the dust and appropriately managing the workers' exposure doses, we feel that it is important to secure worker safety. Furthermore, by implementing the surface survey, including human bodies, materials, vehicles, etc., we would like to properly monitor the radioactive materials traveling outside of the designated managed area. We will accurately implement these measures and endeavor to continuously stabilize the scene of the accident. This is all for today. That's right.